Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India earlier discussed about similarity rules in subsonic, transonic and supersonic flows and for both two dimensional and three dimensional flows as well as axial asymmetric flows and also we mentioned that in axial asymmetric flow there is no transonic similarity rule in general <coughs> and <coughs> however just to for the sake of completion of the similarity rules, we will next discuss little bit about similarity rules in hypersonic flows. Now, while deriving the small perturbation equation, neglecting the product and higher order terms in small perturbation, we obtained the following equations 1 minus m infinity square d u d x. Okay, that time we wrote the equation in terms of x 1, x 2, x 3, but now let us write them in terms of x y z d v d y plus d w d z. to gamma plus 1 into m infinity square u by u infinity d u d x plus m infinity square into gamma minus 1 u by u infinity d v d y plus d w d z. <coughs> plus m infinity square v y u infinity d u d y plus d v d x plus m infinity square w by u infinity d w d x plus d u d z and <coughs> We neglected the entire right hand side for linearized subsonic and supersonic flow, or you said that the perturbations are small and consequently these terms are also negligible. So, <coughs> RH is completely neglected. linearized subsonic and supersonic flow <coughs> so that <coughs> the perturbation velocity themselves are do not appear anywhere in the equation only the gradient of the perturbation velocity appear on the left hand side making the equation linear. The first term is not negligible for linear for transonic small perturbation equation. 
So, the first arm on first arm on right hand side is comparable to first arm on left hand side comparable to first arm on left hand side for transonic flows <coughs> which result that first term on the left right hand side is not negligible. first term on the right hand side is to be retained, which makes the equation non-linear for transonic flow. However, when the flow becomes hypersonic and m infinity is very large, you can see that on the right hand side all the terms are a product of square of the Mach number and perturbation velocity. So, when m infinity is extreme very large, when m infinity is very large, all the terms on all the terms on right hand side comparable to the left hand side term. <coughs> and <coughs> so, the result is that small perturbation equation for hypersonic flows are also non-linear. equation for hypersonic flow is nonlinear and it is strongly nonlinear and as the equation shows that the linearity comes from different sources in case of transonic flow that is transonic flow is also nonlinear hypersonic flow is also nonlinear However, the source of nonlinearity are different. We can see from this equation that for the transonic flow, the nonlinearity for the transonic flow, the nonlinearity comes from this term only. This is the term responsible for <coughs> responsible for nonlinear non-linearity in transonic flow. So, term responsible for non-linearity non-linearity in transonic small disturbance flow
So, it is gamma plus 1 into m infinity square u by u infinity d u d x that is a streamwise velocity gradient the streamwise velocity gradient is a <coughs> streamwise velocity gradient is or in other way the changes in the streamwise direction causes the nonlinearity in transonic small disturbance flows. <coughs> However, in case of the hypersonic flow, the gradient in the other directions are also important. Rather, it can be easily seen that which we will mention right now that the nonlinearity is mostly due to the gradients in the other directions that is in the transverse reaction. <coughs> Let us see what since we will not be going a detail in hypersonic flow, we will just have a very 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 extremely brief discussion on hypersonic flow without going much into the mathematics and also of course, in the physics of the flow. So, Let us see what happens in case of hypersonic flow when the flow is at very high Mach number, the shock even if they are oblique shock and belongs to the weak solution of the m theta beta relation that is corresponding to small deflection shock of small wave angle which belongs to the category of weak shock solution. However, the Mach number being too large the shock strength even for these weak solutions is quite large. As a result there is large changes in pressure and temperature associated with the oblique shocks in hypersonic flow because of very high Mach number ahead of the Mach shock and <coughs> also this <coughs> since these um, shocks are usually oblique and the angle is very close to the Mach angle and what happens because of this strong shock the flow is very close or confined to a very thin layer near the body bounded by the shock which lies very close to the body. Say as an example let us consider uh, again flow about flow past a wedge of small wave angle let us say in hypersonic flow the shock will lie very close to the body <coughs> since as you know that there will be no disturbance ahead of this shock. So, flow up to this is basically this undisturbed free stream and all changes to the flow takes place between this region. This is the reason where all changes takes place. All changes take place here. that is in a thin region near the 
body, which can be called a shock layer. <coughs> and in a real situation where the flow is viscous, it is even extremely difficult to differentiate between the shock layer and viscous layer. They are almost merge together. Even many a times shock layer may lie completely within the viscous boundary layer. Be that as it may, this changes takes place over a very small distance in the transverse region. So, rapid changes in the transverse direction <coughs> and we see this is the predominant cause of predominant source of nonlinearity and it so happens that in many situation the first term on the right hand side which gives the nonlinearity in transonic flow can often be neglected neglected in case of hypersonic flow, the other terms are more important. <coughs> other terms on right hand side are more important than the first one. <coughs> Showing that the term that is responsible for transonic nonlinearity can possibly be neglected in case of a hypersonic flow, because the other terms are much larger. There is very rapid change in the transverse reaction. <coughs> <coughs> now, one more thing happened that in case of a hypersonic flow, the Mach number being very large, consequently, even for an oblique shock of weak category solution, the temperature rise may be extremely large and as a consequence in many such flows due to very high temperature increase, there are some sort of chemical and thermal changes in the gas itself. As an example, the vibration mode of the molecules are excited there might be some chemical reactions like dissociation, ionization and so on. <coughs> However, we will be not considering all those phenomena here, but one more most important thing in case of a hypersonic flow is the rapid temperature rise or very high level of aerodynamic heating. This aerodynamic heating becomes so important that usually the hypersonic bodies or hypersonic vehicles will have rounded leading edge instead of sharp leading edge. So, we will come back to that rounded leading edge as in case of incompressible or low subsonic speed again, but this time because of aerodynamic heating. It can be shown that aerodynamic heating is considerably less if the leading edge is blunt or rounded which gives rise to a bow shock wave and 
subsequently a uh, subsonic flow downstream of that bow shock wave and in that case the aerodynamic heating will be much less than if it were a sharp leading edge as in as is preferred in case of a supersonic flow. The rounded leading edge of course, will give much larger drag due to the presence of the bow shock wave, but in this case the aerodynamic heating is much more important and to avoid that heating a larger drag is accepted. So, <coughs> we have uh, general characteristics that blunt or rounded leading edge to reduce aerodynamic heating drag is sacrificed. That is you sacrifice a large amount of drag and consequently of fuel consumption just to avoid the aerodynamic or not to avoid completely just to reduce the aerodynamic heating in this case. Now, if the bodies are <coughs> rounded, then of course, a question comes that is that thin region or that large changes are occurring in the transverse direction over a thin region, is that now true? That remains true again, that is even if say a uh, body is thin, sorry a body is blunt let us say uh, this type of blunt head body will have a detached oblique shock, but again this detached bow shock. However, this region still sorry a thin So, you see whether we have a blunt nosed body or a sharp nosed body that is whether we have a detached bow shock or an attached oblique shock. In case of a hypersonic flow the shock is always very close to the body surface giving rise to a very thin region in which flow changes rapidly. <coughs> so, here also rapid change in the again rapid change in transverse direction. <coughs> and as you mentioned that in case of a real flow then this implies a very strong interaction between this shock layer and viscous layer. One more special phenomena that we must mention here that is the large entropy change across these across this strong shock. 
there is a large change in entropy across these oblique shock because as I mentioned already that the Mach number being very large this oblique shock is also quite strong and hence a large change in entropy occurs. So, consequently the flow as we know or as we have seen earlier or sorry repeat and large change in entropy and as you have seen that whenever there is a large change or change in entropy. So, it will change this in production of vorticity entropy changes produce vorticity and <coughs> hence the flow is irrotational even if inviscid flow is also irrotational. So, we have irrotational flow sorry rotational flow rotational flow and we cannot define a potential function associated with this irrotational flow. So, the viscous flow inviscid flow is also rotational and a potential function cannot be used <coughs> that means even for small perturbation equation we have to small perturbation equation for hypersonic flow we have to solve in terms of the velocity and pressure <coughs> that means we have to solve the complete set of nonlinear equations <coughs> all the components of Euler's equation as well as the energy equation along with continuity equation <coughs> are to be solved even in case of small perturbation hypersonic flow. Now, one more thing that we find here that is a shock is very close to the body's surface. In general, we know that shock is very close to the Mach angle in supersonic flow. Now, <coughs> this is a general feature in all supersonic flow that shock this is of course, a general feature shock lies close to Mach line or characteristic line. this is a general characteristic of supersonic flow. So, we see that in transonic flow where the Mach number is very close to unity shocks are nearly normal. in in transonic flow <coughs> as m infinity close to 1 implies that Mach angle is
in hypersonic flow in hypersonic flow mu the Mach angle is very close to deflection angle And what then it is result that now mu is very close to sin mu, which is one by m one. this is that for large m infinity mu is very small that is the characteristics angle is very small when we have very large Mach number or rather that in hypersonic flow the characteristic angles are very small and the shock will be very close to that characteristic angle. So, so shock will also be very close body. <coughs> so, what we get that in hypersonic flow in hypersonic flow one by m infinity is theta. which implies that m infinity theta is much larger than 1. <coughs> so, this is what is the hypersonic flows are characterized by this parameter. So, hypersonic flows are characterized by this m infinity theta is denoted by usually k. and this is what is termed as hyperbolic similarity parameter, hypersonic similarity parameter. <coughs> now, within the framework of small perturbation theory, within the framework of small perturbation theory
So, this is the transonic similarity hypersonic similarity parameter <coughs> and this can also be used as a definition for hypersonic flow in over a thin or slender body that is when m infinity tau is much larger than 1 the flow may be called as hypersonic. <coughs> now, since we have we are not dealing with the complete set of equation for hypersonic flow, we can derive or estimate some approximate trans hypersonic similarity rule based on simple shock or expansion consideration. <coughs> Earlier we have seen that from m theta beta relation for oblique shock we had m square sin square beta minus 1 equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 m square sin beta sin theta by cos beta minus theta. <coughs> now, for thin for thin or slender geometry theta is small <coughs> and now when m infinity is large large such that m infinity theta is much larger than 1. then beta is also small. <coughs> this can very easily be verified from the <coughs> m theta beta curves which shows that when theta is small beta is also small if m infinity theta is large or <coughs> and then we can have these approximations that sin beta is nearly equal to beta, sin theta is nearly equal to theta and cos beta minus theta is 1. So, we have these equations then become m square beta square minus 1 equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 m square beta theta. And solving this equation as a quadratic equation, so 
solving as a quadratic equation in beta. what we get is that beta theta ratio is gamma plus 1 by 4 plus look to this particular case that if m infinity theta is if m theta is very large then this term is negligible compared to this and this becomes gamma plus 1 by 2. So, beta by theta approaches gamma plus 1 by when m theta is much larger than 1. <coughs> now, we can evaluate the pressure coefficient also using the oblique shock relations. From oblique shock relations, we have P2 by P1 equal to 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m square sin square beta minus 1 which we have P 2 minus P 1 by P 1 and using these approximations this goes to 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 into m square beta square minus 1 and m square beta square minus 1 if we substitute the value this becomes to be gamma plus 1 by 2 it is cancelled. So, it remains gamma gamma m square beta theta. <coughs> so, so, we have p 2 by p 2 minus p 1 by p 1 is approximately gamma m square beta theta. And <coughs> as we know that C p equal to 2 by gamma m infinity square into p 2 minus p 1 by p 1 or p infinity. <laughs> and this then now becomes 2 beta theta. <coughs> and substitute in beta by theta here this gives 2 theta square into gamma plus 1 by 4 plus gamma plus 1 by 4 
और सी पी बाई थीटा स्क्वायर इज फंक्शन ऑफ एम इन्फिनिटी थीटा हुई चौप कोर्स अगेन कैन बी रिटेन एज दैट सी पी बाई टाउ स्क्वायर इज फंक्शन ऑफ एम इन्फिनिटी टाउ और सो दिस इज दाइपर हाइपरसोनिक सिमिलरिटी रूल is of course a very indirect type of estimation of the supersonic hypersonic similarity rule where we have not considered the governing equation for hypersonic small perturbation equation and also have not considered the boundary condition but based on the general feature of hypersonic flow and assuming that the shock wave plays the important role in case of a hypersonic flow using simply the oblique shock relations we have obtained the hypersonic similarity rule however this the same rule that is obtained if full hypersonic flow equations and boundary conditions are considered and a detail analysis is made <coughs> so what in essence we have done is that we have discussed the very basic or very fundamentals of the nature of the hypersonic flows of our a slender body that hypersonic flows are confined to a very thin region between the body and the shock where the shock is very close to the body surface whether it is an attached oblique shock or a detached bow shock which is usually the case in case of a hypersonic flow because in hypersonic flow the aerodynamic heating is severe and to reduce that heating bodies are usually made up blunt nose or rounded nose which <coughs> reduces the aerodynamic heating but increases the drag to a larger value but that's a sacrifice made to avoid the heating <coughs> or to reduce the effect effect of heating anyway the consequence in any case is that the shock waves are very close to the body surface this is of course a general feature of the high speed supersonic flows that is when m infinity is large its mach angle is very large sorry mach angle is very small and since the shock waves lie very close to the mach angles so the shock angles are also very near about the mach angle and consequently in case of a hypersonic flow this is almost same as the flow turning angle or even maybe <coughs> smaller than that as a consequence the difference between theta and beta that is the wave angle and the flow turning angle flow deflection angle for oblique shock is very small theta beta are very closely or approximately the same and we have used that approximation which we obtained from the general feature of 
high speed flows to derive a hypersonic simulated rule which gives us that C p by tau square is a function of the hypersonic similarity parameter m infinity tau. <coughs> a similar relation can also be obtained if we consider expansion relation instead of uh, supersonic oblique shock relations. So, similar relation can also be obtained if uh, expansion fan or Prandtl Mayer expansion is <coughs> considered. <coughs> so, same relation is also obtained can be obtained considering expansion and the similar and the approximations and the hypersonic approximations <coughs> however will not repeat that process So, to summarize that <coughs> we have obtained a hypersonic similarity rule without considering the hypersonic flow governing equations and boundary conditions, but by, but by a qualitative consideration of the general feature of hypersonic flow. And in doing so, we have also enumerated some of the basic differences in the nonlinearities associated with transonic small perturbation flow and hypersonic small perturbation flow. We have seen that in case of a transonic small perturbation, the streamwise gradient is the major reason of nonlinearity, while in case of a hypersonic flow, the flow is confined within a very thin region between the body and the shock, and large changes occur in the transverse direction while in a over a very short distance, while in the trans Streamwise distance, the changes may be of the similar order takes place over a much larger distance and consequently the transverse gradients are more important than the streamwise gradients, which is contrary to the transonic flow. However, streamwise gradients are more important than the transverse gradient because the flow extent in the transverse direction is quite large. <coughs> also, we have seen that since the flow is confined within a thin region, so the viscous interaction is also always present with the usual boundary layer approximation that all the viscous effect are confined within a narrow boundary layer and outside it the flow is basically inviscid or practically inviscid is not really useful here, because the entire flow is confined within a thin region. So, the viscous and inviscid part of the hypersonic flow are very closely linked and their interaction is always significant. <coughs> also, we have seen that because of a very strong shock at the shock being at very large Mach number, the entropy changes are also considerable and this may cause the change in vorticity and make the flow rotational. So, that usual irrotational potential flow assumption is not really useful in case of hypersonic small disturbance equations. <coughs> and <coughs> so, these are some essential feature of hypersonic flow that we have brought in here and using those relations, using those qualitative discussion and some shock relations, we have derived the hypersonic simulator rule. And as you mentioned that similar 
similarity rule can also be obtained if we consider the expansion relation, but should not done. This of course, concludes our discussion on simulator rule, which now we have completed over the entire flow regimes starting from subsonic, transonic, supersonic, hypersonic all flow regimes. <coughs> Next we will consider some fundamentals of transonic flow. So, we conclude 